life in Hamrur. Got the sun. Alrighty, everyone. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Welcome to day number five of Ramadan 360 with Al Maghrib Institute. I'm your host once again, Sister Hafsa, and it's such an honor to be back with you guys. It's day number five, our first Juma, subhanAllah, so Juma Mubarak to those who are still uh, within the pre Maghrib hours. And I hope that you guys made some great du'as for us last night on Thursday night, um, the night of Juma. Wa alaikum as salam wa rahmatullah to Nadia from Paris, to Hinein Ali from Fatta. Fatta. Oh, I should know this. Fatta PK, Pakistan, I assume. Uh, we got Paris, Henry from the Bronx, New York. We got Zainab, I'm assuming, from Turkey. Yes, Turkey. We got Marissa from Singapore, mashallah. Just like the the last five messages I saw, mashallah. Uh, of course, people coming from from all corners of the globe. Some of you are still fasting. Some of you have broken your fast. Uh, but alhamdulillah, we're brought together for some of the most uh, beautiful, some of the most honorable, uh, you know, experiences possible. Let me just quickly spotlight myself so you can see me. And we're gonna get started in just a short second. And I feel like. I always say with Dr. Farhan, have tissue boxes nearby. You can't afford not to. So um, it's it's always, mashallah, a pleasure to have him with us on Al Maghrib's platforms. And, you know, for our live sessions, he's definitely a veteran of the Ramadan 360 experience. Many of you may have heard of him or know him through his Sweetness of Salah or Sweetness of Hajj programs, which are life-changing. Uh, Nurhanima, I think it is, from the Philippines. Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullah. Fajr time, mashallah. Keep us in your... Uh, you know, pre Fajr, Fajr the Az, mashallah. Hanin, wa alaikum as salam wa rahmatullah. And to those who are coming in on YouTube, of course, and who are consistently joining us, I know some folks join on YouTube so that you guys can broadcast to your TVs and watch with your family. So you're more than welcome, welcome to, to continue doing that. But don't forget to join our uh, beautiful community here through Ramadan360.org to register for free and get access to your member portal to the access to the community here on Zoom and Telegram and the Q&As and all the fun stuff that's upcoming this month, inshallah. That's also a reminder, actually, that uh, inshallah, we'll also be having uh, cahoots kicking off this weekend. I know those are a famous or a popular part of our Ramadan 360 experience. So we've not yet forgotten, inshallah, if you are interested uh, in try trying your hand at a few prizes, inshallah, and participating uh, for some fun with some questions based on some of the topics that we've covered over the last few days. Do make sure that you do join us live on the weekend and, and participate in the student cahoots and notes as well, mashallah. Jazakum khair to everyone who's been diligently and, and consistently show, sharing some beautiful notes and gems from our sessions every single day. And of course, this is day five of the Ramadan 360 of 2024 program. Our topic is living by the book, 30 life-changing Quranic principles in 30 days. And we're honored to be joined today with Dr. Farhan Abdul Aziz on the topic of remembrance. Before we jump into his talk, as usual, we always have a little bit of housekeeping. So just a reminder to you guys, to change your names on Zoom. I know we got a lot of people introducing their locations and uh, you know the, the corners of the, of the globe that are blessed to, to have them, but please do add that to your name here on Zoom so that we can know as well. And I've just edited the um, ability for you guys to turn on your camera. So please do join me on screen. It's really lovely to have company, mashallah, regularly with the same folks, but I wanna make sure that you have new folks joining us as well and, and populating our screen with your new mashallah, uh, and with your videos on if you are able to do so. So shout out to Shefa from Michigan for being the first to do so. We got Amina, of course, from Irving, brother Bilal coming in from Calgary, brother Hassan from the Maldives. We got Ahmed. I feel like, I think you guys, you guys are mashallah many days in a row. Mashallah, tabarakallah. Uh, Malika from New Jersey, Henna from Toronto, Carrie Johnson. Of course, Carrie, you're usually one of the first three. <laughs> MashaAllah. Uh, Brother Abu uh, Omar and Suri from Perth, Australia that I see so far and the others who are turning on. Jazakum Allah khair for doing so. Now, alhamdulillah, um, it's now day five. So just out of curiosity, what has been, I think we've had four talks now so far. So what's been your favorite talk? Just out of curiosity, what's been your favorite topic and just instructor and talk? Um, let us know here in the chat. We'll we'll see who we can who we should invite back next year. No, I'm joking. Uh, sincerity, your favorite from uh, Sheikh Suleiman Hani. You got humility. You got a lot of votes for taqwa. Loved all of the sincerity. The one the one the most. No, just you love the sincerity one specifically. Taqwa with Sheikh Amar was was stood out to you. Lots of people said taqwa. Mashallah. You'll see a lot of of Sheikh Amar and um, Sheikh Suleiman later in the sessions as well. So I'm glad that you guys are enjoying them so far. Submission. Humility, awesome sauce, mashallah. Sincerity from Hanna, awesome. 
Um, so that's good to hear. I'm glad that there's some topics that are really resonating with you guys. And inshallah, there's so much more of that to come uh, throughout this month. Um, of course, Dr. Farhan, I don't know if you guys are, are, know him, but I can't wait to introduce him to you because the passion that he exudes, uh, it, it feels like he's jumping off the screen, mashallah. Uh, it's hard to keep up with, with his energy, but um, I can't wait for you guys to experience it as well. That said, as always, we're super grateful to the folks that make Ramadan 360 possible year after year. And especially now, every year, subhanAllah, it feels like there's some kind of crisis. There's some kind of suffering happening within the Muslim community. May Allah relieve it all. I mean, but this year, especially, I know for the last several months, it's been kind of like it's been the most dystopian, strange, like I can't even find words to describe how how terrifying it is to, to see what's happening to our brothers and sisters in Palestine. And it's we're so grateful that Hamda, there's experienced, you know, professional charities on the ground who've been working for decades to alleviate the suffering of the people in Gaza and mashallah, who are doing incredible work right now uh in the in their emergency response to try to, to do as much as they can to alleviate alleviate the suffering right now during this genocide. Of course, in the US, we're partnered with HHRD with uh, in the UK, we're partnered with Forgotten Women and in Canada, it's Islamic Relief. So please keep them in your du'as. The aid workers on the ground are not having an easy time either. And please support them as generously as possible, inshallah, um, so that we can help our brothers and sisters in need. Um, and of course, as part of your daily routine and your daily ajr and inshallah, your sadaqah jariyah this Ramadan, uh, please make sure that you do keep a Maghrib's daily giving uh, program in your du'as, inshallah, uh, and you do donate generously so that we can make as much of an impact on on way more Muslims, inshallah, every year after year. Um, we spoke earlier about how Sheikh Muhammad al-Sharif's legacy has increased, has grown since he's passed, Allah yarham. Um, and it, you guys are part of that. The fact that people that have come on for the very first time in Ramadan 360 are who don't even know who Sheikh Muhammad is uh, are part of his legacy, are adding to his rewards and his good deeds. Uh, you know, subhanAllah, please make sure that you are consistent in your giving as well. And that especially in this early part of the month, there's going to be that automatic kind of dip that we tend to have in the middle. There are certain days that, you know, we maybe did not do as much as we could have, or we missed on certain opportunities or we are too tired or exhausted, but at least this is something that you can do without, you know, without having to remember to do it every single day and that you can continuously get that ajr for every single day of Ramadan that is to come inshallah. So once again, that's amagrib.org forward slash give daily. We're at 520 right now. I know we had an ambitious goal yesterday, which we didn't hit exactly, but alhamdulillah, I'm happy that every single day we're increasing in our efforts and our numbers and all of you who've donated so far may Allah make it heavy on your skills Jazakumullah khair for making us part of your you know Ramadan Ajr and for being here even just present even if you weren't unable to do donate remember I think that the smallest donation we have is like 50 cents so whatever you're able to whether it's $5, $10, 50 cents, $2, 20 make it regular make it consistent that's the reward inshallah of it now, for day number five, uh, Alhamdulillah, I think we have Dr. Farhan with us, so we're going to get started uh, in just a minute or so, inshallah, with his session. And I mentioned to you guys yesterday, subhanAllah, that Dr. Farhan um, had just been on the front lines in Gaza very recently. Um, so we're looking forward to hearing from him. Um, I know this is something that I, a lot of Muslims would, you know, we would hope and we dream to be able to use our efforts and our skills and to do anything to help the people on the ground. But mashallah, Dr. Farhan, is, is, what you learn a little bit in his bio is that mashallah, He's a, a medical doctor. He's an ER doctor. So he was able to lend his, his skills there. Um, for those who don't know who he is, uh, he was born and raised in Michigan. He studied Arabic uh, and Tajweed in Egypt and Arabic and Islamic studies through various local institutes and teachers in the U.S., um, he's completed his undergraduate and medical uh, studies at Michigan State University, where he le later served as the clinical osteo faculty. Sorry, he served as clinical faculty to the College of Osteopathic Medicine. He's currently a practicing emergency medic medicine physician, as I mentioned, and he's an instructor here with the Maghrib Institute. You guys have seen him through our online programs, through some of our live sessions, through some of the amazing experiences and that we've been able to put forward. Um, and he's also just started touring his brand new class, Faith and Honor, that the Sirius Hujarat on site in cities around the U.S. and inshallah globally as well. Welcome to the screen, Dr. Farhan Abdulaziz. It's an honor to have you back. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you doing, Dr. Farhan? I know it's strange. I keep asking this. It's it's hard for us to be doing super well as Muslims right now. But how is the first? How's the beginning of your Ramadan been so far? Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. It's it's been good. Like you said, it's a little different with a heavy heart, but uh, also um. Inshallah, we'll get a chance to talk about the trip. The, the people there are amazing, and uh, they uh, they're very inspirational in terms of their their iman, their level of tawakkul on Allah and stuff. So it's uh, it's uh, it's on one side, it's you know the heart hurts. On the other side, you 
you see that their level, they're rising to the occasion and, and they're embracing Ramadan in the circumstances that they're in. So it's amazing. Alhamdulillah. I'm, I'm, I'm sure there's so much to discuss. And I know we have we will have a lot of questions about this for you at the end of your firsthand experience of what it was like, you know, in the front lines of Gaza. But we have a beautiful topic and a beautiful discussion to be had before that, inshallah. So I will pass it over to you to start off today's Ramadan 360 topic on repentance. Bismillah. Bismillah. Uh, everyone. So the theme is, uh, you know, for this this whole Ramadan 360 is, is uh, you know, Quranic uh, lessons or Quranic themes that we're, we're trying to share with you. And so the topic for today is about dhikr of Allah and remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I thought maybe it's most fitting to to look at the one the one thing in the Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only told us to do a lot of. Like, subhanAllah, you know, there's so many ibadat that you can do. You can, you know, fast in Ramadan, you can read Quran, you can do salah. What's what's the one thing Allah says do in abundance? And it's the dhikr of Allah. Allah says, kathira, And make much abundantly remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And dhikr, Quran recitation and salah falls into the general category of dhikr. But subhanAllah, dhikr specifically is what Allah mentioned is do a lot. Of. He didn't specifically say read the Quran a lot or pray a lot or or do Amrah a lot or Hajj a lot or fast a lot. Although those are all beautiful acts of worship. So you see something that's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala subhanAllah in his mercy, dhikr is something that's so easy to do, right? It's very easy on the tongue, um, easy on the time. Um, and you could do it literally in almost any and every scenario, subhanAllah. Driving to work, walking between classes, sitting in class, Right now, as you're sitting here, this is a form of dhikr of Allah, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but even specifically saying alhamdulillah or subhanAllah and the like, all of that is part of uh, dhikr subhanAllah. Um, and, you know, so I wanted to kind of talk to you a little bit about dhikr and uh, also give time for, you know, my experience in Fadasli. And honestly, like, you, 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 you've all seen the videos just as I have, and you see dhikr flowing on the tongue of the people of Gaza, despite the extremely difficult and frankly, heinous circumstances that they're in sometimes, the dhikr of Allah flows from their tongue so easily. And so let's talk a little about dhikr. You know, the first thing that I wanted to kind of look at it from a perspective is when when do you actually remember someone, right? Dhikr is remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When do you typically remember someone? And so there's different scenarios in which human beings will typically remember someone else, you know, and one of them is, is when um, when there's a sense of fear, you know, if you're doing something, there's a sense of a fear of someone, you'll remember them, like your parents or your teacher or your boss. If you're doing something that maybe you shouldn't be doing or whatever it is, and subhanAllah, you see right away then how they could plays a role in your life and how they could can transform your life. Because if you have it a habit of every time you leave the home, you say, Bismillah, and as you're going to go into your car, you wouldn't leave your home to go to somewhere haram, right? It just, it, 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 it's kind of contra contradictory. Say, Bismillah, and then, and then you're also driving to wherever you're going to drive to that's not pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or you, you uh, every time you start something, you say bismillah. So you start your computer, you say bismillah, but then you're going to use your computer for haram. Or you, uh, you know, you're, you're sitting in your car and the dua, you say subhanahu wa All these things, all these adhkar that you do before you go to sleep, like would you dare sin against Allah and then go to sleep? And so right before you go into sleep, you say bismillah, amutu Oh Allah, I'm going to die and live in your name. Right? So these are, these the dhikr, it forces you to recalibrate your behavior because if you're always remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and remembering the consequences of your deeds from one aspect of it, it will help keep you strong, keep you firm. Um, so that's one, you know, fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The other is, you know, when you're in need, right? So if you're sitting in your car and your car doesn't start, then the, like subhanAllah, it literally happened to me yesterday. I sat in my car and my car didn't start. And then the, the idea came, why didn't I say Bismillah? SubhanAllah. But I didn't say Bismillah the first time when I know my car is expecting my car to start. And so when there's a need comes, oh, my car's not starting. I'm stuck in the parking lot and I'm, you know, got a car full of supplies. I need to get home. And now I'm saying, yeah, Allah, help me, right? And so there's the idea of that, well, if you're constantly in the of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you make that part of your habit, and something I have to work on, of course, all of us do, is um, when in time of need, you, you uh, people tend to remember the one who can help them. But we learn from the Hadith of the Prophet Shidda. No, get to know Allah, acknowledge Allah, you know, uh, remember Allah in times of ease, and then He will remember you in times of difficulties. Fine. And we'll come back to this hadith. And then the a, a third scenario or common time when people remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is when they're in love. 
Well, when they remember someone is when they're in love. And specifically, when you remember Allah, of course, if you love Allah, you'll remember him a lot. You know, one of the, the poets, he, he wrote a line of poetry. He said, He's He says, I, I find it very strange, the one who says, I remember the one who I love. Because he says, would you even forget? So that way you have an opportunity to remember, right? Like if you truly love someone, do you understand what he's saying? That if you truly love someone, you would, there would always be on your mind. Right, and so the one who loves Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and those who love Allah, those who those who believe love Allah even in more intensity. And so if you love Allah, then his you will always be remembering him. When you're and subhanAllah, you see this with people of Allah. You know, sometimes I've sat with some shiukh and 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 people of and people of taqwa, and subhanAllah, you see you're driving in the car with them, maybe taking them from the you know the airport to their, their venue for a program or whatever it is. And as they're in the car, just randomly, la ilaha illallah, subhanak inkunudullah, inkunudullah, right? Or subhanallah, alhamdulillah, just words of dhikr of Allah, you know? And it's, it's not even scenarios where you think like you see something beautiful, like, subhanallah. It just flows from their tongue. But it's because people have developed su such a love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that their mind, um, their heart really can't bear a moment without making remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so we want to all, again, myself first and foremost, strive to get to that level. Not just remember Allah in times of need, not just remember Allah in times of fear, but constantly and, and always have Allah in your heart. And that manifests itself on your tongue. And then by virtue of that, it affects your actions. SubhanAllah, when Allah says, you know, in the Quran that uh, those who, you know, salah prevents evil and wicked deeds. Allah says, um, Salah prevents you in evil from, from evil and wicked deeds. Right? And so SubhanAllah, those who pray, you 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 pray Salat al-Jama'ah and now you have to pray Salat al-Asr, at least for us, you know, in my time, my time zone is between Dhuhr and Asr right now. And so it's if you understand that you're going to stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and pray to Allah, in salah, you're standing before him. You know that he looks at you when you pray. You know that he talks to you when you pray. And you're talking to him when you pray. Would you then be able to consciously go, you know, intentionally commit sin between the and Asr and then go stand before Allah again in Asr? That's why Allah says salah prevents you from evil and wicked deeds. Because the idea, if you if you truly are praying the way you should be praying, you're remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But what's interesting in the verses, Allah then says, Wala dhikrullahi akbar. Allah says salah prevents you from evil and wicked deeds. But then he says the remembrance of Allah is greater. And so subhanAllah... One of the, the scholars say, well, why is that? And so one of the, 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 the more, you know, um, obvious explanations of, the, of that statement is that, well, the purpose of salah, Allah says, Aqim dhikri, is to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, establish prayer for my remembrance. So Allah is saying, okay, salah prevents you from evil and wicked deeds, and the remembrance of Allah is greater, meaning the, the fact that you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the, the purpose of the salah itself to connect you to Allah, to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is the greater goal, the greater benefit here. But subhanAllah ibn Abbas, he actually says about this verse, a very powerful interpretation. He says that, and he actually asked a man this question. He asked him, what do you think of this verse, what it means? Wala dhikrullahi akbar. And so he says, you know, dhikrullahi bit tasbihi wa tahmidi wa tahleel. Remembering Allah by saying subhanAllah and alhamdulillah and la ilaha illallah. In salah we do that, right? In salah we praise Allah and we, and we thank Allah and the like. And we declare his oneness. And so the, 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 the uh, Ibn Abbas, he told him actually, he said, no, that's not what actually what the verse means. What the verse actually means is that dhikrullahi iyakum akbaru min dhikrikum iyahu, subhanAllah. He says that, no, but you know what's actually greater? And when Allah says, and the remembrance of Allah is greater, it's he's referring to Allah's remembrance of us being greater than our remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, subhanAllah. Because Allah says, فَذْكُرُونِي أَذْكُرْكُمْ Every time you make remembrance of Allah, make mention of Allah, Allah makes mention of you. So subhanAllah, he's saying, when you remember Allah in your salah, Allah is actually remembering you as well. And so the remembrance of Allah of you is far greater than your remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Ubay ibn Ka'b, when he was told by the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the, the Prophet told him, O oh, Ubay, Allah has commanded to me to recite to you Surah Bayina. And so Ubay ibn Ka'b, he was one of the, 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 the Qurra, one of the, those people or the, from the Sahaba who were known to like master the art of recitation of Qur'an. And so when the Messenger of Allah is coming to him وسلم, and telling him, Allah has commanded me, the one receiving revelation, to go to you and recite to you the surah, you know, you can imagine the level of honor and, and um, you know, just how he would feel, Ubay ibn Ka'b. But you know what, subhanAllah, he, he literally just froze in his tracks when the Prophet told him this. And then he said, he asked the Messenger of Allah a question. He said, did, did Allah was Sammani? When Allah commanded you to, to read to me Surah Bayna, did he mention me by name? Did he say, recite to Ubay ibn Ka'b? And so the Prophet said, yes. 
It's Ubay ibn Ka'ab. At that moment, he just broke down crying. He literally broke down crying because he said, yeah, that realization that Allah, above the seven heavens, above his arsh, made mention of my name. Like, who am I to be worthy of Allah mentioning me by name? And so that, that, that realization just caused him to break down in tears. And every time we make mention of Allah, Allah remembers us as well. فَذْكُرُونِي أَذْكُرْكُمْ سُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ and you know another hadith and, uh, uh, that gives us a picture into the unseen. You know, the Prophet says, Inna mimma tathkuruna min jalalillah, min al-tasbihi wa tahlili wa tahmeel. When you make remembrance of Allah, from subhanallah, and alhamdulillah, and la ilaha illallah, praising Allah, or declaring the perfection of Allah, or declaring the oneness of Allah, he says, he gives us a picture into the unseen. He says, what happens is, when you do that, this, when, you know, for everybody now, say subhanallah. So you just said subhanallah. This subhanallah, this word that you say, it's it's it, there's no physical manifestation of it in terms of you know a physical body, right? It's just a speech, it's sound waves. But subhanallah, that takes a physical form. Allah's the hadith says it takes a physical form and it goes up to the arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It, it goes around the throne of Allah and it has the buzz like the buzz of bees, meaning it's it's making the sound constantly. And then, so then the Prophet says, what is it saying? He says, to bisahibiha. It makes mention of the one who said it. So all of you who are listening now who said subhanallah or say alhamdulillah or say la ilaha illallah, there is something physical that's now going around the throne of Allah and it's making mention of your name in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So not only does Allah mention you, but you are mentioned in the presence of Allah by making dhikr. And then Prophet he then says, wouldn't any one of you like to have something that continues, continuously makes mention of him? Or wouldn't you want your name mentioned in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You know, you know, just, just again, but just so you understand what this means. You know, like imagine walking into a convention. 50,000 people are there. The speaker's on the stage. He's speaking. Maybe it's, you know, one of one of you know people that has draws a big crowd, maybe Shaykh Hamza Sulaiman or Mufti Mank or Yasir Qadi. May Allah preserve all of them and increase them and in, in benefit and knowledge. SubhanAllah, imagine one of them. You walk into this hall of 50,000 people, and then all of a sudden, when he sees you walking in, even though you're walking in late, he sees you and he gives you a shout out Hey, Assalamu Alaikum, how are you doing? Thank you for coming. You know, I'm going to see you after the lecture, or whatever it is. And so every, everybody's going to be looking, Who is this guy? Who is this guy that gets a shout out in front of all these people? So again, but I want you to understand that subhanAllah, you have something physical making mention of your name in the presence of the angels and the presence, of course, more importantly of Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself makes mention of you when remember him, subhanAllah. So we're in the month of Ramadan, the, Ram the month of dhikr, right? Hajj is also a season coming up. It's a month of dhikr. And you know, subhanAllah, in Hajj, you know, one of the things that, that happened to me, we, we were, my first Hajj ever in my life, we were, um, we were leaving Arafah to go to Muzdarifah. Now, and then from Muzdarifah, you go to Mina. Now, Hajj is, is perhaps there's no time more in your life will you make, will you make more dhikr than in Hajj. If you've gone or you have a chance to go, inshallah, you'll see, you'll see what I mean by that. And so Allah actually says, وَذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ فِي أَيَّامٍ مَعْدُودَاتٍ In the ayam of Tashriq, the 13th, 14th, and 15th of Hajj, the Hijajar and Mina, Allah says, the only thing you have to do there is throw the Jamarat. But the other thing is make a lot of dhikr of Allah. So you find people in, in Mina, you know, it's an easy time. It's a time that is very easily wasted. But Allah says, make a lot of dhikr of Allah. So Hajj is the time of dhikr. You know, but subhanAllah, when we were going from Arafat to Muzdarifah, our, our bus got stuck, stuck on the way in traffic. And so we have to get to Muzdarifah. You know, we're getting delayed. It's almost Fajr. We have to be there. And so I remember calling one of my, my imams back home. And I asked him, Sheikh, what should I do? And he said, just walk. Just walk to, walk to, walk to Muzdarifah. And I said, Sheikh, I've never been here before. I don't know the directions. <laughs> and so then he said, he said, there's millions of people. They're all going in one direction. You're not like in Hajj. If you're ever alone, you're probably in the wrong place, right? Because there's millions of people doing the same thing. And I'm like, that's a good point. You just see thousands of people walking in the same direction. They're all going to Muzdarifah. So I just walked with them. Um, but I'm saying that because, you know, subhanAllah, one thing that's very interesting is, you know, just like you should never be alone in Hajj. In this world also, you should never be alone. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Allah says that the seven heavens and the earth and everything in between, whatever is in the heavens, whatever is in the earth, is 
declares the perfection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, makes tasbih of Allah. Right? So I want you to imagine everybody's at Hajj, everybody's going in one direction, one million people walking toward Muzdarifah, and then you have one person alone who is not doing it, walking the opposite way. Like, what would you think of that person? <laughs> like, bro, like everybody's doing tawaf, you know, um, around the Kaaba going, you know, uh, counterclockwise. Then you have one person in the middle of the crowd walking clockwise. Like what, you, what, like, what would you be doing, bro? Everybody's going in one direction. And similarly, in this world, in the creation of Allah, everything Allah has created, the soil, the plants, the bushes, the shrubs, the angels, the jinn, the human, every, my cat, everything Allah has created makes dhikr of Allah, makes tasbih of Allah. Everything Allah has created makes dhikr of Allah, but you don't understand their tasbih. So we don't understand the, my, the way my cat makes dhikr of Allah, but we know she makes dhikr of Allah. We don't understand the way the leaves make dhikr of Allah, but we know they make dhikr of Allah. Then Allah ends the verse by saying, إِنَّهُ كَانَ حَلِيمًا غَفُورًا He indeed is forbearing and very forgiving. SubhanAllah. But the point is, you don't want to be alone. You know, tasbih, the word, it comes from sabaha. Sabaha means to swim. Right? And if you're in the ocean, you're in the sea and you're swimming, right? if you stop swimming, what happens? You're going to drown. And similarly, when you make tasbih of Allah, it keeps you afloat. It keeps you moving forward and closer to Allah, closer to His destination in this dunya. And if you leave the dhikr of Allah, just like if you leave swimming in the ocean, you'll drown. If you leave the dhikr of Allah, you will drown in this dunya. And so the tasbih of Allah, the creation does it and we too should join in that. And SubhanAllah, one of the most, you know, I find powerful stories of this is the story of Yunus alayhi salam. Yunus alayhi salam, when he was swallowed by the, by the whale, you know, subhanAllah, Allah, you know, the, the, uh, Yunus alayhi salam was someone who was, who would make a lot of dhikr of Allah. He made a lot of dhikr of Allah. And so, uh, what happened was when the, when Allah commanded the whale to swallow him, Allah told him, told the whale, do not harm him, do not harm his body or his physical body or whatnot. So he was swallowed whole. He wasn't, you know, he didn't have any broken bones or soft tissue injuries or like, he's a swallowed whole. And the whale takes him to the bottom of the ocean. And subhanAllah, and a hadith, there's weakness to it, but subhanAllah, again, for purposes, in this case, for purposes of, of learning, there's no problem in sharing this hadith. And it's the, mentioned by Ibn Jarir and Tafsir and, and, and some uh, recorders of hadith have recorded this hadith, in which when the, when the, when the whale reached the bottom of the ocean, semi Yunus Hassan, Yunus alayhi salam, he began hearing this sound. Again, this, this kind of like, this, this, this constant sound. And so he said to himself, what's going on? Imagine just his bewilderment. He's now, he was in the ocean. Now he's swallowed in this belly of a whale. He's, there's no light. There's nothing. He's trying to understand where he is. His understanding. And then he hears something. And the narration says, فَأَوْحَ اللَّهُ إِلَيْهِ وَهُوَ فِي بَطْنِ الْحُوتِ إِنَّ هَذَا تَسْبِيحُ دَوَابٍ بَحَرٍ Allah inspired to him that while he's in the belly of the whale, that the sound you're hearing is the tasbih of the creation of Allah in the sea. SubhanAllah. Everything is making dhikr of Allah. And when he realized that all the creation is making dhikr of Allah, then is, is when he made the famous dua. He fell into sujood. And he says, La ilaha illa anta subhanak inni kutubin al -dhalimeen. How perfect you are, O oh Allah. And with the, uh, there is no God but you, O oh Allah, and how perfect you are. Subhanak inni could be, I made I, I was among the wrongdoers. I made a mistake. And Allah Subhanahu wa says, "Fastajabna lahu wa najaynahu min al-ghamm wa kadhalika nunji al-mu'minin." Allah says, "Immediately we answered his call." But you know what's interesting though? And and then Allah says, uh, and this thus we saved the believers. But you know what's interesting about the story is when the angels heard the dua of Yunus alayhi salam. They heard this dua Right, the, the, one narration says again a weak narration, but it says that the du'a came just like the tasbih goes to the throne of Allah. This the du'a of Yunus alayhi salam stopped at the throne of Allah, and the angels they heard and they said, "Ya Rabbana inna nasma'u sautan da'ifan bi ardan gariba." Oh, Allah, we hear this weak voice calling out. Right, he's in the belly of the whale in this condition that he's in. And it's coming from a weird place. Like the angels know where the dhikr of Allah ascends from in this earth. The masajid and the homes that the Quran is recited and the salah is offered and the like. They know. So the angels, they're, they're saying, oh Allah, we're hearing this dhikr coming from a voice that's weak and from a place that we haven't heard this voice come from. 
And so Allah told them, it's Yunus alayhi salam. So the angels interceded on his behalf and said, Oh Allah, by virtue of what he used to do from his good deeds from day and night, will you not save him? And Allah said, of course. And so he was saved from the belly of the whale. And that's where the hadith comes that we talked about. Get to know Allah in times of ease. Remember Allah, acknowledge Allah, recognize Allah and his bounties upon you. And then Allah will be there for you and remember you in times of adversity and difficulty. SubhanAllah. And so then you see from this, you look now, you look to the people of Gaza and the difficulties they're going through and the loss of life. You know, subhanAllah, you think about it. When Allah says, That Allah will certainly test you by, by, um, by fear. Are the people of Gaza in fear? They don't know when the bomb, when their, when their home will be struck next. They're literally sitting in their homes, hugging their families, waiting that perhaps they might go next. Or they'll put all their family together and go to sleep because if they're going to die, they want to die together. Or some of them will say the opposite. They'll say, you know what? If we're going to die, why don't we have somebody from our family live on? So they'll split the family. So their kids will be at the aunt's house, the uncle's house. The other kid will be somewhere else. So that way, if they die, they'll, they'll live on. But subhanAllah, they're in this hope. Walju and hunger. They're starving. They're literally starving to death. You know, when I was there, subhanAllah, even at, subhanAllah, all the physicians, nurses, all the staff at the hospital for five months, they they haven't been paid. Their homes, their families are displaced. Their, their families are refugees. And you see muscular wasting. The first sign you see of malnutrition, the temples right here, they speak a lot in how it's caved in because of the, of the lack of nutrition. And loss of, of wealth and lives and, and fruits. And you see that. They've, their homes have been left behind. Their wealth has been left behind. has been destroyed. Their, their families, they've lost loved ones. And, and whatever, you know, um, fruits that they have. But then Allah says, الصابرين, and give glad tidings to those who are patient, subhanAllah. And so you see these people, despite what they're going through, how patient they are. I mean, the, 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 the situation in the hospital, the most advanced standing hospital left, it's a nightmare. Like a hospital is supposed to be a place of healing. You go to the hospital and, 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 and unfortunately and sadly, it's a place of agony. It's a place of distress because subhanAllah, as much as you want to try and help, you're so limited in what you can do from resources in the hospitals, overwhelmed with patients way beyond its capacity. But subhanAllah, you know, despite that, you see the people making dhikr of Allah. You know, I, 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 I uh, in the hospital, it's, it's, the hospital, the situation there, the, the, the ER is, so the hospital is overwhelmed. It can normally fit, you know, about 200 and something patients. There's over 750 patients there. So way beyond its capacity, right? So there's patients everywhere in every room. And there's also families living there everywhere in every room, you know? So every room does either displace family or there is, um, or there is uh, a, a patient. So the ER, there is no room to see ER patients, subhanAllah. They're all, uh, they're all admitted patients or the people who have nowhere to go and are living there now. Maybe they were discharged from the hospital, but they don't have a home to go back to. They have no family to go back to, so they stay in the hospital. And so one fam So what happens is when you're in the ER, you're looking for patients in the ER to take care of, but families will come to you of their patients or their loved ones who have already been admitted to the hospital, but they haven't seen a doctor in a long time. So they'll come. So one family came to me and they said, can you come see my, my father or my, my uncle? So I go to him and subhanAllah, the man, his name is Ahmed. His face was completely wrapped up in, in, in bandages. So you, I couldn't see his face from his head. I couldn't see his hair. I couldn't see his ears. I couldn't see his eyes, his nose. Everything is covered in bandages until it covered the upper part of his lip. So all I could see is the bottom part of his lip. And what I could see was his lip was ripped open and, and it was just, I didn't even want to call it a lip. It was hanging down. And it, you could see the tissue was already dying and it's you know getting black and we call it necrotic and the like and infected and all this. That's all I could see, but he can talk. He can't see me. He could talk to me. I can talk to him and his family's around him. And so his nephew began telling me what happened. He said, my uncle, a civilian sitting in his home and a bomb struck, struck the house. And he was under the rubble for eight days, eight days under the rubble. On day four, the soldiers had come into where they had bombed and they were looking for anybody alive and they were killing them. So people who had survived the blast, but who were under the rubble, anybody they could see, they would kill them. And so this man, Ahmed, I'm, I'm hearing his story. And his nephew also talked to me afterwards. I'm hearing his story. He tells me, I, I, I asked him, what did you do? And he said that I made a dua to Allah. 
And I said, oh Allah, just like you saved Yunus from the belly of the whale, and just like you saved Yusuf from the bottom of the well, oh Allah, save me from these soldiers. And so the soldiers either didn't see him or they thought he was dead because of the severity of his injuries. And they didn't, they let him, they, they, they left him. And so subhanAllah, four days later, his family finds him. Four more days, so eight days total, he's under the rubble. His face was unrecognizable. His face was literally split open. Like there what the, you, you cannot, when I saw the pictures when he went to the surgery and I saw the pictures after they uncovered him, literally it's like his face is filleted open. There is no eye. There are no eyes. He's blind now. One eye was completely destroyed and, and the other one has shrapnel that went through it. And he, so he's blind. And you can't, there's no nose. There's, there's literally nothing. There's no skin. It's just the tissue underneath. And subhanAllah, as he's telling me the story and as his nephew was standing there telling me the story, he keeps saying, Alhamdulillah, Hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil. I'm literally just like dumbfounded. I'm like, this state, he has a broken arm, by the way. Eight days of sitting on the road with no pain medicine, with his face filleted open, beyond recognition. And he's just, all he's saying is, SubhanAllah, and he's holding this masbaha. As he's telling me this, he's holding this masbaha in his hand and he's making dhikr of Allah. This is his, but he gave me this. I left him and I was just bewildered. And then I said, you know what? I have to go back and ask him to hear more of his story. So I went back to him and I asked him, what were you doing in this time? Eight days. Because you wonder this question, right? What, what is life like? And subhanAllah, you know what he said? He said, I'm making dhikr of Allah. I'm making dhikr of Allah. And he said, you know what? I remember the most. He said, the hadith that stuck with me is the hadith Qudsi where Allah says, wa wa jalali. I swear by my honor and my magnificence, I will not cause my slave in this earth to either have, sorry, I will not cause my slave to have two fears or two senses of security. And so if my slave fears me in this dunya, I will give him security in the day of judgment. And if my slave feels safe from me in this dunya, he lives his life without any thought of Allah, he could do whatever he wants, then I will cause him fear on the day of judgment. He said, I thought of that, that hadith. Because the soldiers are there, right? They might kill him. And he's making this dua, oh Allah, like you saved Yunus alayhi salam. He's, and he's saying, you know what? I'm feeling fear of Allah. You know, now... So, oh Allah, give me security on the day of judgment. And I was just like blown away. And then he calls me, and I'm, I'm you know, said some words to him, whatever. I don't even remember what I said, but just encouraged him, reminded him, and the like. And so then he come, he calls me close to him, and then he says, "Take this," and he gives me this masbah. And so then I had a masbah with me. Sheikh Muhammad Faqih had gifted it to me, so I gave it to him, and I said, "We'll trade." And I make dhikr and with this, and you, and inshallah, you get the ajr, and you make dhikr, and your ajr is worth more than me. So please make a lot of dhikr on this masbah, and inshallah, I get the ajr. Sheikh Muhammad Faqih, inshallah, gets the ajr as well. But subhanAllah, eight days, you know, one of the doctors asked him, which is amazing. One of the doctors asked him. I didn't, I didn't even think to ask him. I was just, I was just, my mind was just, I was just blown away. He, he asked him, how did he survive? And you know what he said? He said, under the rubble, I would just move my hand and I would find water and drink it. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. His mouth is, he doesn't even have a mouth anymore. And he's drinking water. And you know, a situation like this, from a medical perspective, somebody like that should be in ki kidney failure, should have something called rhabdomyolysis, should have compartment syndrome, where his, his muscles are tense from the swelling. And he had none of that. All of that would kill him in eight days. But he made a dua, oh Allah, save me like you saved Yunus alayhi salam. And he, his kidney function was completely normal. It, it, it belies everything I've studied and everything I've seen in my, my medical practice in my life. It doesn't make any sense. But Allah tested him with losing his sight. And subhanAllah, the hadith says, whoever Allah tests with losing his sight and he's patient, Allah grants him jannah. SubhanAllah. So SubhanAllah. And then his, his nephew is telling me, he's like, you know what? He said, you know, in all circumstances, we praise Allah. No matter what happens, because it's something Allah has written for us. He, he, his nephew is telling me this. His family is around him. His, his niece is a munaqaba sister. His, his nephew is a beautiful recitation. Inshallah, when I get a chance, I'll post on my social media some of his posts. I haven't had a chance to yet, but inshallah, I will. He said, he said, um, he said, uh, subhanAllah, Allah had commanded the pen to write 50,000 years before the heavens and the earth were, were created to write. 
And so he, he wrote upon the people of Gaza, struggle in the path of Allah and ribat fi sabilillah and being patient. And so we, we, we praise Allah for choosing us and favoring us with this bounty and blessing, subhanAllah. And so he says, and just like, you know, one sahabi, he told us the message to the people, just like one sahabi changed the whole situation in the battle of al Ahzab, you can play your role. So play your role and don't forget us in your dua. But he says, alhamdulillah, we say, we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so subhanAllah, the dhikr of Allah, when Allah says, تَعَرَّفْ إِلَى اللَّهِ فِي الرَّخَاءِ يَعْرِفُكَ فِي الشِّدَّةِ Know Allah in times of ease, Allah will save you in times of difficulty. When Yunus alayhi salam, Allah says about him, فَلَوْلَا أَنَّهُ كَانَ مِنَ الْمُسَبِّحِينَ لَلَبِثَ فِي بَطُنِهِ إِلَى يَوْمِ يُبْعَثُونَ If Yunus alayhi salam wasn't from amongst those who would make a lot of tasbih of Allah, he would have stayed in the belly of the whale until the day of judgment. But his Remembrance of Allah in times of ease saved him when he was in a time of difficulty. And I can only imagine this brother Ahmed, his dua that he made, how Allah answered his dua and belied all medical science that Allah saved him. And he's still there despite that eight days later making dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, praising Allah despite the pain. Is, there's no pain medicine. His face is ripped open. His arm is broken, open fractures. And he's praising Allah. It's ajeeb, man. The, the iman there in Gaza is ajeeb. Subhanallah. And I'll just end with this verse. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu idha laqeetum fi'atan fathbutu. Oh, you who believe, when you meet an enemy force, then, then be firm. Stay, stay firm and stay steadfast. وَذْكُرُ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْنِحُونَ And we make, make a lot of dhikr of Allah. Make abundant dhikr of Allah so that you may be successful. Allah is telling them, when you face an enemy and you make a lot of dhikr of Allah and you're firm, you will be successful. So the people of Gaza, inshallah, they'll be successful. The victory is coming for them. Like what I see from these people, the iman there, I've never seen anywhere else. So inshallah ta'ala, the victory is coming. But we learn, we have to take the lesson from them. Dhikr of Allah will be our savior. When we, when we develop a relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in times of ease, Allah will remember us in times of difficulty. Um, JazakAllah khairan for your time. Uh, I was supposed to end a few minutes ago. Forgive me, Hafsa, I went over. But um, I'll go ahead and we'll take a couple minutes question and answer, inshallah, I, if it's okay. I have to, I have a shift at work, so I have to get going. Um, so I will uh, keep the floor open for a few minutes, inshallah, if we can. And then if I'm five minutes late, inshallah, it's okay. But JazakAllah khairan for your patience and your attention. And may Allah subhanahu wa give us tawfiq to... To, to be people of Allah, people who remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and people who, whose tongues are frequently making the dhikr of Allah. And thus, by virtue of that, our hearts are closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma ameen. May Allah make this Ramadan a fruitful Ramadan for us. May Allah count us amongst those who are fasted with iman and hope in Allah and the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And make us amongst those who witness the qadr and make dhikr of Allah and ibadah of Allah and dua to Allah in the qadr and we get the reward of that. Ameen. Ameen. Jazakumullah khairan. Jazakumullah khair, Dr. Farhan, as usual, it's, there's no words, subhanAllah, to describe. And, and honestly, I can't, I can't under, I understate how important it is for, for people like you, doctor, to be on the front lines and to experience all that, to see all that, and then, you know, somehow maintain your sanity and come back and use it as a reminder for the people. So Jazakumullah khair for being here with us, even before your shift and squeezing in as much time as you can. May Allah grant the people of Palestine a victory sweeter than any victory, a healing greater than any healing. And, and this, uh, wit make us all a witness of their iman and their resilience on the day of judgment. I mean, but I mean, um, I don't know if we have any on topic questions. I know there's a lot of compliments and people are grateful for this reminder. Um, I see one actually, sorry. So someone said, do you agree on those dickers that have a certain number attached to it? Like uh, say this seven times, say this a hundred times. I've seen conflicted views. So I just want some clarity. If there's anything specifically from the Hadith, the Prophet of course, we take it. And then um, you'll find a lot of books and things that like that will mention certain things. You make this dicker and you spin around eight times and you put it under your pillow. You're going to get married tomorrow. That, that has no place in the Sunday, right? But if we know, that's Madaniya, by the way, running around. <laughs> um, um, but uh, if you, uh, if there's something specific, you know, the Prophet said, make, you know, read the, the three quotes, for example, you know, before Maghrib and before, you know, before, uh, before sunrise and the like. So specifically that, then of course we, we do that. Beautiful. Jazakumullah khair. Um, someone just asking if you can re-quote the Hadith Qudsi that you had mentioned earlier. Uh, which hadith could see? <laughs> <laughs> so I'll ask. I'll ask them privately, or if you guys can, if you the same, if you can message later, inshallah, we'll see. Okay, if, inshallah, inshallah. <laughs> um, if there's any other questions, sorry guys, there's so many messages I can't find all of them. Um, so I'm trying to find something that's on topic, but I don't see any. There's lots of questions, but not all of them are about our topic today. Um, so let me just see. Uh, someone just asking, what's the best vicar that you would recommend that we do? Uh, it, it, honestly, I feel like it depends on the scenario, right? Um, but we know some hadith, the Prophet said, for example, 
you know, two statements that are very easy on the tongue, heavy on the scales, and beloved to Ar-Rahman. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi subhanallah al-azim right when you're making the, the best istighfar say the istighfar Allahumma anta rabbi la ilaha illa anta khalaqtani wa ana 'abduka wa ana 'ala hadika wa aqimas salat until the end maybe if somebody memorizes it you can share it in in the chat but um these are things that you know depending on the situation and, and the and the scenario those are things that you could uh, you can make the qur'an of Allah for beautiful and last question we'll take someone just asking do you have any words of advice for muslims in healthcare and future physicians and our role in serving the ummah uh my advice would be um, when you get it, especially medicine, but really any field of health, there's any, any field in general, you can get overwhelmed with study in your, in your, in your studying stages. And that's important. You want to be a good physician. You want to be like, but what I would say is, look, you don't have to be a hermit. You don't have to be lost, uh, in your books for four years and not seen again, because unfortunately the people who do that, um, you run the risk of continuing to be lost afterwards. You don't want that. You want to be have a connection to Allah Taala throughout your medical school, throughout your residency, whatever it is that you can do. But you have to prioritize continuously attending halaqat, um, traveling for classes and medical classes. Literally, that's why I did in, in medical school. We would go to medical classes just by having the exam Monday morning. We would take a double weekend class through Sunday night uh, and then come back, drive and stay up all night and take the exam. The point being is uh, you don't want to cut yourself off for these four years of medical school, three years, eight years, whatever it is of residency that you're going to do. You want to keep a connection. And if you do that and what you're able to, then you'll find barakah in what, what you have left behind afterwards. So once you're an attending or you're able to work or a consultant in the UK or whatever it's called, you're going to be able to, uh, you, the principle is this, in terms of Allah, that's it. If you help Allah, Allah will help you. If you try, meaning you try your best in whatever whatever your, your um, capacity you have at that moment, then Allah will help you as well. And so in medical school, don't go in with the idea that I can't do anything. I'm going to be gone. No. You want to still be at the masjid. You want to still pray to the every night. You still want to fast in Ramadan. You still want to, you know, attend classes, attend halakat, still try to memorize the Quran. All these things are important to stay connected. Uh, so that would be my advice for people going into the medical field and on their journey now. Jazakumullah, Dr. Farhan. Great questions, everyone, and phenomenal responses as hey, always. I, I know the person didn't answer, but I, I, the, yes. I'm trying to think of which hadith Qudsi I mentioned. I know the one, if it's the one that the, 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 the man, Ahmed, he mentioned, uh, that hadith, if you're talking about that, uh, that hadith is uh, what Allah said, he says, that I swear by my majesty and, and power, I will not like uh, cause I will not join two fears upon my slave, nor two senses of security. So in in dunya if he feels secure for me and he feels safe, he could do whatever he wants in this dunya, he lives a life negligent of Allah, then I will cause him fear on the day of judgment. And Allah says, in dunya. But if he fears me in this dunya, I meant to I will give him security in the day of judgment. We ask Allah to make us amongst Allah. Ya Rabbal Alameen. Jazakumullah khair. And this, someone just mentioned this really rocked my understanding to a positive trajectory. If we just accomplished that, then that we accomplished what we wanted to this, this session. Jazakumullah khair. Dr. Farhan, once again, thank you. Please apologize to your workplace. I know you're squeezing us in between shifts between and trying to prioritize your Ramadan priorities and this. May Allah make it heavy on your skills as always. I mean, Ya Rabbal Alameen. We'll see you hopefully soon within the Amagha world. And we look forward to, to following you around the globe as you tour your new class, Faith and Honor, inshallah, with Amagha on site. No, um, I hope it has, the plan is to to go back to uh, uh, Gaza soon in a couple inshallah. days. So I'll be there for the rest of Ramadan, inshallah. And I, I hope to be able to share. I didn't last time, but I think I'm going to be sharing updates this time. So if you want to, um, on my social media, my Instagram or Facebook, uh, both should be linked, inshallah. Instagram is what I mainly use. I'm not mm -hmm. sure if I sometimes go to Facebook or not. Internet's limited there, but inshallah, ta'ala, I will try and keep you guys updated when I'm there uh, this time around. I think I've made that decision uh, instead of waiting until I come back. So I'm just waiting to get in. I'm not posting anything yet until I get in inshallah one time and then I'll, I'll start uh, sharing inshallah. So you could, uh, Farhan Ayy Aziz. We'll share. Um, we'll share. Inshallah, I will, um, I will try and post updates there. Inshallah, Jazakumullah khair, Dr. Farhan will be keeping up for you with you and keeping you in our da'as um, throughout your journey. Jazakumullah khair for sharing that with us as well. And yes, for those who are forgetting it or anything, we'll, we'll share the links, inshallah, in the chat as well. And with that, Dr. Farhan, inshallah, we're looking forward to reflecting on, on this topic with Ustad Taymiyyah for a second part of today's session. Inshallah, we'll see you very soon. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Subhanallah, that was Dr. Farhan Abdulaziz, 
on the topic of remembrance for day number five of Ramadan 360. I know there was a lot. I told you guys to always have the tissues ready with Dr. Farhan. He doesn't, he doesn't hold back. Um, but I hope that everyone benefited immensely. If you did, please continue to keep uh, Dr. Farhan in your du'as, inshallah, um, and the people of Palestine in your du'as as well. And yes, please do uh, share and, and, and support generously all the work that's being done on the ground to relieve uh, the, the suffering and the pain of the people of Palestine. Um, inshallah, we'll drop the links again of the uh, charities that we're partnered with who are doing some amazing and work on the ground and please continue wherever you're giving that reminder whenever you're feeling that that pain make those the eyes and continue to support as much as you can inshallah um, i'm sure there's a lot of reflections and apologies i know a couple people had their hands up as well for questions we try our best especially if you have questions about ibadah or dhikr or uh, anything like that feel free to share those and wait uh you know put them into the fatwa night q a form that you see on your student portal under the hand raise icon that form is already open so you can pre-submit your your questions so that you have a higher chance of being answered this sunday at 2 p.m est when we're joined with sheikh abu one of our senior instructors here at Maghrib, who's going to be tackling the first fatwa night, inshallah. Jazakum al-Khair, Sister Tanzila, for sharing Dr. Farhan's uh, Insta Instagram link. Mashallah, his, his, his social media is some of the most wholesome content on the internet, so I hope uh, you guys benefit from it regardless, but definitely for this upcoming journey that he's going on, please keep him in your du'as as well, inshallah. Um, with that said, of course, now we have uh, just the first half of our, 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 our experience for today is, is finished, but alhamdulillah, we have our full Quran Reflect, where we're going to continue, uh, you know, to doing the dabr and focusing on the topic of remembrance and dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And with that, we have Usada Daimiya Zubair with us rejoining us. Just before we jump in, I want to do a quick little refresh to see if we have had an increase in our count uh, for our Ramadan daily giving campaign. Mashallah, every time I look, there's always been an uptick. Mashallah, I know people, some people, some people are, 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 you know, watching this in the recording, watching it ahead of time or afterwards, but Jazakallah khair to all of you who watch it live and, and take that reminder and act upon it. So we've had a few people who have, mashallah, taken that and have the, the numbers jumped up at 525, but remember our goal for today is 600. So please, every time you're reminded, head over to maghrib.org forward slash give daily and make us part of your daily edger. And one thing I, I do want to mention is that one of the things that really stands out to us about our uh about the, the people of Palestine and the strength and resilience that we see in them is is that the level of iman the man, the level of yakin the level of confidence that they have in their faith the tawakkul all these all these concepts that we're trying to learn now or trying to emphasize through Ramadan 360 they've been an example of all those concepts as Dr. Farhan uh you know laid out for us earlier as well so that's part of why we do what we do at Maghrib is that we want to make sure that people are equipped with that knowledge that gives them that confidence that gives them when when the worst of the worst happens when life seems like it's it's it can never possibly get worse that they have that internal strength, that internal peace, that internal relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Quran and the Sunnah to be able to continue and to push past that. And that's part of what you're contributing to when you're contributing to Give Daily. So a little reminder for me for that. And with that, let's jump into Quran Reflect day number five, inshallah, with Ustada Daimiya. Um, let me just see if I can bring you on. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, Ustada. How are you doing today? Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullah. Alhamdulillah, I'm well. Uh feeling i'd like to say uplifted uh -huh. um listening to yeah. uh sheikh barhan mashallah uh when you hear such amazing stories it's subhanallah it's it really adds to your it really brings you yaqeen you know that our religion is true our lord's help is there allah you know allah does not abandon his slaves subhanallah i mean the the story of um, the brother from Gaza, uh, the one who was under the rubble for eight days without any food, water that that people brought him. Allah, Allah is the raziq. He is the provider. Mm -hmm. He is the one who gives life. He is the one who gives death. Subhanallah. Sometimes when you, you need to tie in the, the, those reminders with with the reality and the story, sometimes we see a lot of these stories and someone was mentioning to me, we should have a trigger warning for this, which my I didn't realize we should have probably done so. But we see a lot of these stories and they just make us like, they break our heart again and again and again. And we we need that reminder to, to, to center us again into, mm -hmm. in, into the deen, into how to deal with all this kind of tragedy and pain and to know that there's hope at the end of it. So mm -hmm. uh, subhanAllah, it was so, such an essential session and I can't look for, I look, can't wait to, to reflect inshallah with you, Sada, and to look forward to the sharing that people are going to be doing. So let's jump in. Bismillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajim. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulihi al-kareem. So the dhikr of Allah, the remembrance of Allah is the nourishment for the soul. It is what sustains our heart it is what heals our heart. 
It is what brings contentment and satisfaction to our heart. It is an indication, when a person remembers Allah, it is an indication that their heart is alive. And the remembrance of Allah is a great act of worship, uh, which is also very easy. But it is only easy for those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it easy. If you think about it, to say subhanallah, to say alhamdulillah, is not something difficult. Especially when you don't have to say it in an audible way. You just have to say it softly. You don't even have to whisper. You just have to move your lips. So it's not something that is difficult. It is easy. But still, many people find the remembrance of Allah to be difficult. So it is only easy for those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it easy. Sometimes we think that the remembrance of Allah is not really a big deal, right? It's, you know, for example, if, if you have some time and you want to do a good deed, you think you have to, you know, go somewhere, uh, you know, do something really big, uh, you know, something that appears to be very important. You have to, you know, give a huge uh, 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 a huge amount of money uh, in order to, you know, obtain rewards. But as we learn in the Quran, وَلَا ذِكْرُ اللَّهِ أَكْبَرُ the remembrance of Allah is greater. Meaning it is greater than many good deeds. Uh, akbar. And there's different interpretations of this. But what this means is that the remembrance of Allah is not, is not something small. Don't think that it is insignificant. Don't think that it is something people do only when they have nothing better to do or nothing else to do. You know, sometimes the remembrance of Allah is literally at the at the end of our list. But wala dhikrullahi akbar, it should be at the top of our list. It is what should fill our day. It is what should fill anything that, that we are doing. Now, the word dhikr literally means to remember. And to remember means as in you, you remember something and you don't forget it, right? You remember it, you don't forget it. You bear it in mind. Uh, dhikr can also mean to recall, to recall something that one had forgotten. It can also mean to make mention of something on one's tongue. And there's different ways of doing dhikr. Dhikr can be just in the heart that you're just thinking about something. It can also be just on the tongue that you're talking about something, you're saying something. But the best form of dhikr is that which is with the tongue and the heart. Meaning you say it and you also remember, you also think about what you are saying. So to remember Allah basically is to not forget him, right? To remember Allah is to make mention of him, to keep your tongue moving. Uh, as in, in hadith, we learn about keeping the tongue moist with the, the remembrance of Allah, meaning with his praise, with his glorification, with his exaltation. And the dhikr of Allah is something that is easy for a person to do when a person is thinking about Allah, when a person knows Allah, when a person uh, does, you know, uh, ha is conscious of Allah. Because whatever is in your heart, then what's going to happen? It's going to automatically come onto your tongue. Whatever you uh, busy yourself with, whatever is on your mind, right? If, you know, for example, you're you're uh, afraid about something uh, happening, you begin to dream about it, right? And you, 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 you begin to think about it as you are driving, as you're eating, and it doesn't matter what, what you're doing, it's on your mind. And when it's on your mind, it also comes on your tongue. So the dhikr of Allah is only easy for those who truly remember Allah in their heart, who are able to see the blessings of Allah all around them, who are able to uh, appreciate the favors of Allah and, and also the amazing uh, things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala causes to happen all of the time. Those who are witnesses to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's marvels 
and his his miracles they're the ones who are able to remember Allah easily with their heart and their tongue now the remembrance of Allah is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, commands us to do over and over again in the Quran uh, you know for example Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us fadkuruni uh, adkurkum remember me i will remember you now when should we remember Allah? In the Quran, we see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, Fadkurullaha, sorry, Faida qadaytum manasikakum, Fadkurullaha. That when you have completed your rituals of Hajj, then you should remember Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Faida amintum, when you are in a state of security, Fadkurullaha, then remember Allah. فَإِذَا قَضَيْتُمُ الصَّلَاةَ When you have completed the prayer, فَذْكُرُ اللَّهَ Then remember Allah. Which means that even when you complete something good, you know, you complete an act of worship, then what is it that you should move on to next? The remembrance of Allah. He, any time that you complete something, right, you have a moment, you, you, you are now done, you should move on to the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How much should we remember Allah? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that Udkurullah dhikran kathira. Remember Allah a lot. And as Shaykh Farhan mentioned earlier, that uh, there is no other act of worship for which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us to, to do a lot of. You know, when it comes to salah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that we should pray. Right? Aqimu salah. When it comes to zakat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us to give zakat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us to follow his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And there's numerous uh, commands that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us in the Quran. But there's literally only one act of worship for which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that we should do a lot of. And that is dhikr. That, udhkurullaha dhikran kathira. Wadhkurullaha Kathira, remember Allah a lot. And to remember Allah a lot means that you're not just remembering Allah in the morning, in the evening, in salah, after salah, uh, you know, as you uh, eat, after you eat, as you, uh, uh, you know, uh, drink milk or, you know, you know, for example, there's different du'as that we have been taught what to say when we uh, make wudu, what to say when we wake up in the morning, what to say when we go to sleep. Uh, to remember Allah a lot is to remember Allah more than and outside of what is legislated for us in terms of remembrance. You know, there's dhikr that is mashroor that that we that we have been instructed to do at certain times. All right, and then. There is dhikr that is general, that, that is outside of those occasions or those actions for which there's a, a required dhikr. To remember Allah a lot is to remember Allah more than just when you eat, after you eat, when you wake up, when you sleep, when you make wudu, in salah, right after salah. No, it's it's the dhikr that we we have uh, that, that 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 basically has not been obligated on us, all right? That that we have uh, not been instructed to do at a certain time in a certain place, along with a certain action. And the people who remember Allah like this remember Allah, qiyaman wa qurudan wa ala jinubihim. They remember Allah while standing, while sitting, and also while laying down. They remember Allah bukratan wa asila in the morning and in the evening. They remember Allah fi as Allah says. Remember Allah in your heart, all right, and also publicly. And they remember Allah in all situations, in ease and in hardship. Allah subhanahu wa taala said to Musa alayhi salam and Harun alayhi salam that go to Fir'aun wala thaniya fi dhikri, and do not. Uh, be lazy or or or, or do not uh, slow down in my remembrance. And when it comes to the dhikr of Allah, the dhikr of Allah is uh, 
any it's it's a good deed which is the most accessible if you think about it uh because it doesn't matter who you are where you are what your condition or your circumstance is you are able to make dhikr you don't have to be of a certain age you don't have to you know be of a certain financial position you don't even need wudu right you don't need to face the qibla you don't have to go somewhere to make dhikr right you don't have to sit down if you're standing or stand up if you're sitting right you don't have to be in a certain position in order to make dhikr uh, you don't have to wait for something to happen so that you can do dhikr you know for example you want to pray salah you want to pray dhuhr but it's not time yet then what do you do you wait for dhuhr right you want to pray in jamaa but there's nobody at home so you have to go find somebody you have to go to the masjid in order to, or wait for somebody to come in order to be able to uh, pray with them right uh, any when it comes to many good deeds you can only do them if you are in a certain situation or you have you know fulfilled uh, certain prerequisites and, or it may not even be required of you given your circumstance but dhikr is something that everybody and anybody can do right and as we learned from our brother subhanallah it is even something that a person can do if they're under the rubble for 8 days allahu akbar a person cannot move they cannot see they cannot walk they cannot work they're too busy or they have nothing to any it doesn't matter what your circumstances what your condition is you can make dhikr and this is so empowering this is so strengthening yani it really strengthens you because when when it comes to many good deeds even though you you know you may want to do them but you may not find that capacity or that ability to do it right like for example you may really want to recite quran but you you just can't because your throat is hurting right or maybe you had some dental treatment you re- you really can't move your mouth much right but when it comes to the dhikr of allah you don't even have to move anything in your mouth right you may exactly you may want to give charity but you don't have the money and the companions mentioned that to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam right that the wealthy companions have just gotten ahead of us what do we do we're we're being left behind what did the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, tell them that they should make dhikr so those who remember allah then the dhikr of allah becomes their source of strength it 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 becomes a source of their confidence it becomes a source of healing it becomes uh, a a a any basically the dhikr of allah takes your loneliness away because you are not alone you know that you have not been abandoned you know that you have you you have not been just left to fend for yourself you are not alone you have allah so it becomes a source of strength and healing and courage and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those who remember him allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises them in the quran allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions men who are you know busy in their trade in their business but their business and trade does not distract them from the remembrance of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises wa dhakirin Allah kathiran wa dhakirat, the men who remember Allah a lot and also the women who remember Allah a lot. And those who do not remember Allah are condemned in the Quran. The hypocrites are described as who? Wa la yadhkurun Allah illa qalila. They do not remember Allah except very little. In Surah Al-Kahf, Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala warns us that do not obey those whose hearts are uh, are distracted from the dhikr of Allah. Any people who don't think about Allah, you you don't stay with them. 
don't don't listen to them don't obey them in in surah al-kahf at the end of of the surah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions those whose eyes were covered alladhina kanat a'yunuhum fi ghita'in 'an dhikri and they they were under a cover preventing them from remembering allah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the quran that that waman a'rada 'an dhikri fa inna lahu ma'ishatan dhanka the one who turns away from my remembrance will have a miserable miserable life allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, tells us that وَمَنْ يَعْشُ عَنْ ذِكْرِ الرَّحْمَانِ نُقَيِّضْ لَهُ شَيْطَانًا فَهُوَ لَهُ قَرِينٌ That whoever becomes blind to the, the dhikr of Ar-Rahman, then a shaitan is appointed over that person. And that then shaitan becomes a companion and a friend to that person. فَأَنْسَاهُمْ ذِكْرَ اللَّهِ Shaitan makes them forget the, rem- remembrance, the remembrance of Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also tells us, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لَا تُلْهِكُمْ أَمْوَالُكُمْ Sorry, لَا تُلْهِكُمْ أَمْوَالُكُمْ وَلَا أَوْلَادُكُمْ عَنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ That, O oh, you who have believed, let not your properties nor your children distract you from the remembrance of Allah. Meaning, never make your property, your money, your job, your work an excuse for not remembering Allah. And do not make your children an excuse for not remembering Allah. Because whoever is distracted from the dhikr of Allah because of these, because of their wealth and their children, then what's going to happen? Such people are going to forget about Allah. They are going to be distracted from worshipping Allah. And they're going to suffer heavy losses. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. There's a couple more things I want to share, but inshallah, I, I'll I'll um, mention them as I hear from you, as I take your reflections. Oh. All right. Amina, go ahead. My reflection just was just how important and great Zikr is, but then also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it so much easier for us to do like it's light on the tongue we can do it while we're doing basically anything and even if we're not doing anything like, like uh stepping outside and just observing the things around us like look at the tree and how complex it has been made it just makes me want to remember and pray the last one until more and i've also heard like a story that i wanted to show of um imam ahmed bin humble where he was when once he was traveling and I, I'll, I'll try to keep it short. But he was traveling and it was nighttime, so he wanted to stay in the masjid. But mm-hmm. the masjid God let him, and a baker saw him, and so he told him, Imam, to come take rest in his house. And while the baker was kneading the dough, he was constantly doing istighfar. And so Imam Ahmed asked him of why he was doing istighfar. And so the baker asked him that, a uh, baker told him, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted him everything he had made dua for except for one thing. And that was that he wanted to meet Imam Ahmed. And I think that was subhanAllah such a beautiful story. And it really motivated me personally to do more Barakallah fiki. And see that person is just a baker, right? They're 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 doing their work, you know, earning money to provide for themselves and their family. And as they're baking, they're also remembering Allah. So the dhikr of Allah is not something you do only when you are free. It is something you do as you live your life. Uh, Jia, go ahead. Um, assalamu alaikum. For me, when I was listening to Shaykh Farhan and then your lecture, I was just thinking about the story of Yunus salam and Yusuf salam. Both of them, when one of them was thrown into the sea and he went into the belly of the whale, mm-hmm. the sort of that pain, which was from his inside and the fear that was around him. And similarly, when Yusuf salam was thrown into that well, the darkness of the well mm-hmm. and the, the, the way he was treated by his brothers and the pain that he had inside. And at the same time, they were doing their zikr. So this is like, for me, I was thinking, I have a lot of doubts and a lot of 
you know, worries and a lot of things that come up into my heart, my brain. And this is always the zikr that fortifies me, that becomes a shield and a nourishment from inside and a shield from outside when it protects me from mm -hmm. the fear of the world around me, alhamdulillah. And then I was listening to the story of the brother Ahmad in Gaza, mm -hmm. how he was provided by the provision from his rab. So it was the zikr that was keeping him nourished and you know, strong, fighting all of that thing. He was in extreme pain when we see his face split like anything. But still the sort of that conviction, that iman, it was because of that he was having that sort of the urwatul wasqa, the sort mm -hmm. of that strong handle mm -hmm. to which he was holding, alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. So it's not the thing that happened to only our prophets, but this can happen to us. But we only have to have that sort of iman, the level of conviction, alhamdulillah. So it's like it's like my like problem solved, alhamdulillah. This is my nourishment and my shield against anything that can hit me, inshallah. Uh, yes, the dhikr of Allah is nourishment. In hadith, we learn about how towards the end of time when the jal will appear and the Muslims will be... Uh, you know, in in hiding, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned, and uh, the companions were concerned that what what will they survive on? How, how you know what is it that they will eat? How will they survive? And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned that what the angels are sustained by, any the nourishment of the believers in those difficult days, will be what the angels are sustained by. And what is it that the angels are sustained by? It is the remembrance of Allah, right? That That is their sustenance. So the dhikr of Allah is really a substitute for a lot of things. It is something that will, that will replace many, many things for you. You know, the, the holes and gaps and things that you see missing in your life, the remembrance of Allah can, can fill those. SubhanAllah. And you also mentioned how the dhikr of Allah is a shield. Yes, it is. It's actually a fortress, right? And uh, Yahya alayhi salam mentioned how, you know, if there's a person who is being chased by an enemy uh, and the enemy is right behind this person, Imagine that this person then enters a fortress and and secures himself inside of that. Only then is that person safe from the enemy, right? If the, if the person is outside of that fortress, the enemy is right there. So the only way to protect yourself from shaitan is to fortify yourself with the dhikr of Allah. As long as you are remembering Allah, you are fortified against shaitan. The moment you leave the dhikr of Allah, you are in danger. Literally in danger. Hapsa? Hapsa Tahir? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Wa alaikum assalam. Wa alaikum assalam. And to me is that the more you remember Allah, the more you get, the more you remember Allah, the more you get reward and enjoy your life. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, yes. The more you remember Allah, the more you enjoy your life. That is so true. Barakallah fiki. Uh, Akisha? Yes, salam alaikum. I have a question. Um, so uh, let's say you're a person that you do zikr like, um, you know, uh, how do I say, like religiously, and you do it all um, wholeheartedly and sincerely. But then once a calamity, you face a calamity, it somehow, um, you know, you like you see yourself in that calamity, even though you believe Allah is in control and Allah's going to, because you've been doing a lot of zikr, Allah can save you. Um, but let's say, for example, you did end up actually that, facing that calamity. Like, what would you sort of interpret that? Would you feel in a way that maybe it's not strong enough or maybe... You know, no. uh, you interpret that as this is what my Lord willed for me, and I am pleased with Allah. Alhamdulillah. Okay. Um, and I think, subhanAllah, the people of Gaza are showing that to us on a regular basis. 
Yes. Right. That even in in the face of heavy, heavy loss or pain and hardship, they they're saying Alhamdulillah. Hasbun Allah Nirmal Wakil. Allah is enough for us. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. And and we're pleased with Allah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jazakallah. Barakallah. Nafisa. Um, alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, can you hear me? Yep. Okay, great. I just want to share your personal experience. So sometime, um, I think it was January 27th of this year, I was returning from an event and um, I was involved in an accident. Alhamdulillah, I was not fatal. And when I proceeded on that journey, it was kind of funny. So when I was leaving the event, I first got stuck in the elevator, was making dicker. That went away. And then when I got in the Uber, um, we stopped by to refill, you know, the gas. Mm -hmm. And before then, I was making istighfar during the journey. And about a minute or so, 90 seconds before the incident happened, Allah just made me switch from. So I remembered something my brother told me. He was also involved in um if a kind of accident some months back that was in September 2023 and he mentioned that he was making la ilaha in Allah so I just something just said to me switch from istighfar to la ilaha in Allah and I did that and nine seconds later the whole thing happened right and I just said to myself that subhanallah alhamdulillah that was my first utterance to myself mm -hmm. however quiet it was because I realized that it was truly by the protection of Allah and his will that he changed my mind, made me think in that line to switch my thicker from far to la ilaha in Allah. And, mm -hmm. you know, I think I had a headache because I hit my head on the, um, uh, the uh, what's it called again, the bags, the airbags, but that was it. It could have been worse because there had been another accident before we got there and someone actually drove it into our car, hitting us into the curb and then, you know, how the rest, you know, happens. But my point is, if Allah enables us to remember him, we should be thankful. Mm -hmm. And if he speaks to us in whichever way we should listen and truly in the remembrance of Allah to hearts find peace. Absolutely. So and uh, the Prophet وسلم, also said that Afdalu dhikri la ilaha illallah. The most excellent form of dhikr is to say La ilaha illallah. And also, in another hadith, we learn about afdalu du'a'i, alhamdulillah, that the best form of du'a, calling upon Allah, is to say alhamdulillah. All right. Um, R. Anisa. Assalamu alaikum. Okay. okay. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Uh, one thing I just wanted to just say a reflection is that liquor actually helps with anxiety and overthinking. It's the most easiest thing if your mind is going to, you know, having really those bad racing thoughts. And then once you start saying, then that actually helps you divert your mind. And even I think I, one example is just right now, whenever something I have to talk or, you know, go into an interview, my, I start having anxiety. But right now, when I started saying, you know, Alhamdulillah, or Alhamdulillah, you know, and thinking about it, it actually helped a lot. So that's excellent. Jazakallah khairan for sharing that. There's so actually much. a hadith also in which we learned that um, I'm going to paraphrase it that um, the one who is frightened by the darkness of the night and who is afraid to spend uh, in the way of Allah and is afraid to face the enemy. And he, three things are mentioned that cause fear and anxiety. The Prophet ﷺ said that this person should increase in saying, Subhanallah wa bihamdi. Subhanallah wa bihamdi. And he glorify Allah, praise Allah, and this is something that will help you manage your fear, your anxiety, uh, and, and also overcome inner weakness. Anisa, go ahead. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, just a quick one, something that I reflected on back to going to Yusuf alayhi in regards to when he was um, basically betrayed by his brothers, he was sold as a slave, like he was put into imprisonment. 
due to nothing that he had done, um, especially when he was put into prison, but he didn't let go and he still was so patient, alhamdulillah. And like he still submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it just shows the fact that whatever trials that he went through and however whatever hardships he went through, he still was patient throughout it and having that submission, he could never let go, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But but it just shows that you still have to put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and even though it was a very difficult he was in very difficult situations, but there was always, like like I said, there's always a way out if you are a believer. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, that's one of the stories I just found, like, I just wanted to just, it just shows that even when you, he was slandered, he was put into something that he shouldn't have been put into, but he still never let go. Yeah. Jazakallah khair and Laiba, go ahead. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Well, uh, basically, uh, the thing is that when I was reflecting upon today's discussion, what I could remember was, you know, every prophet, as the Ibrahim, Zakaria, um, you know, when it came to Yusuf, uh, Musa, Isa, you know, each and every one I could remember and all I could remember when they mentioned in the Quran, the first thing was that when they were faced with a calamity, they did the zikr. But to some prophet, the help came immediately, you know, to Hazrat Ibrahim, like, you know, he was the first person. It was just immediately the fire got called, like, you know, but 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 to some prophets like Hazrat Yusuf it, or Yunus Salam, it came so late, but it did came. And sometimes I think so, um, you know, sometimes we do the zikr, but the Im immediate help, we don't see it and we get so impatient. But I think so. We should do, definitely have belief from these stories that inshallah the help will come and the moment would definitely eventually succeed inshallah. So I was very you know this this uh, this discussion made me this you know blasting um, you know revelation to me that indeed all the prophets they did had the help of Allah. Some had late, some had early. So jazakallah khairum. And just one question I have is um uh, you already covered it. But sometimes you do feel hopeless, right? So what is the zikr to do when you feel like uh, hopeless and you don't know how how the uh, which zikr to do when you're feeling hopeless? I'm I'm guessing that's that was a question. Um, I think when when you're when a person is feeling despair, um, they should glorify Allah. Because when you glorify Allah and you say, for example, subhanallah, subhanallah, wa bihamdihi, you're mentioning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's perfection. And you're reminding yourself that Allah is free of any fault, free of any weakness. Um, if it is that you are feeling uh, weak uh, and, and you, you, know, you, you want something, you need something, then of course, uh, with dhikr, there should also be dua. Um, Adiza? I just want to share my lifetime experience. It's a long story, I want to cut it short. I took a very difficult decision in my life. I'm actually from Ghana, now living in Canada. I left my sis, Kate. I'm in Canada here as an international student. And I was here for almost six months, eight months, not getting a job. I always miss Zikr. SubhanAllah, Wabi Hamdi, SubhanAllah, I all the time. Like, like any Zikr that comes to my mind, I always do this. So there was one time a friend of mine just called me and said she wanted to go somewhere. She had a toddler. She wanted me to escort her. So when they weren't leaving, I just grabbed one of my resume and said, maybe I'll just be, drop it somewhere. So we were supposed to drop the effort place, but we dropped. Uh, at the first one before the actual place we were supposed to drop. So once working, I got, I just bought one place. So I just went there and I said, I just want to submit my resume. I need a job. They said, okay, we are not hiring now, but you just drop it. Two weeks later, I was busy with my assignment and studies. Two weeks later, they had to call me that I should come for, if I was there, if I'm, if I'm not secure a job, I can still come. So I went there. And then we arranged for interview. Subhanallah, 
I was prepared for this interview, making Zikri praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help me. So it was on Wednesday. I went there. There was nothing like interview. They just gave me the forms to fill. I got the job. And then that inspired me to talk to you was yesterday. I was doing intake. I don't know, placement, which is, I was doing placement too with them. Yesterday, my manager just told my lecture that if, it, if I don't mind, their headquarters in Toronto, most of their management are leaving, they are retiring. If I don't mind, they can just train me here and then take me to Toronto to manage their headquarters. So I was so at the spot, I just went to Suju to Tankala because I was here, I'm here all alone, ups and down, I've faced a lot of things, but faith, I've, I've seen enough change from Allah. Like Zika, to be frank, with Zika and Fit, you can get there. And that is, has a lot of things for us. So what I can say is, let's keep on having faith in him and then keep on making Zika. Any Zika, because I don't have, I don't have any particular Zika to say. Uh -huh. I, I, anything that comes to my mind, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, I always say everything. Once even in class, when it comes to my mind, I begin to say. And then even at the workplace, I face a lot of challenge, but all the white people around there, unfortunately, everybody loves me. But I have other so, colleagues, but I think it's a competition because they are also international students. But as soon as yesterday, she just told my lecture that if I don't mind, I can fill the form and then I can move to Toronto. I said, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, Zakam I have faith in you. Seriously, I want them to have faith in Allah. He will do it for us and then keep on making it. I, this is my second time of joining this Zoom. And I just want to say it out there. Allah is doing it for us. And he has, he has a lot of love for us. Just have faith. Keep praying. And then keep on going on. Thank you very much. I just want to express my personal Jazak experience. Jazakallah khairan. Uh, yes, keep making dhikr. And um, the dhikr of Allah will suffice many things it will be a source of many things inshallah in in your life uh, when a person remembers allah their sins are forgiven when a person remembers allah uh you know opportunities are open for them when a person remembers allah they receive more than what they would get if they tried to get it themselves right because you are uh exalting allah you are fulfilling the purpose of your existence so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take care of you better than you can take care of your own affairs. Uh, and when it comes to the dhikr of Allah, there is of course many adhkar, but one uh, that, that literally can be your go-to uh, no matter what is subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. There's numerous Thank ahadith you. that Thank tell you. us about the importance of saying these words that you know how they are uh, easy to say and you know a person can can say them in any order inshallah subhanallah alhamdulillah la ilaha illallah allahu akbar inshallah we'll conclude over here now hafsa jazakumullah khair ustada i love that subhanallah in this session there was a bit more of that personal kind of stories of hope and sharing jazakumullah khair to those who did Sister adiza and i forgot the name of the sister earlier but uh you guys are the heroes of this experience so when we get to hear about you and 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 the way that that these experiences have manifested these names of Allah or these uh, qualities or characteristics or these reminders, how you've utilized them. It's it's inspirational for us all. So Jazak Malakar for making yourself vulnerable and sharing your personal stories. That's some of the most memorable parts of the Ramadan 360 experiences. I still remember stories from two, three years ago. Some of the folks who I miss, who I don't see right now, who mashallah, uh, have made such a difference through the things that they have shared. So keep on sharing, inshallah. I'm um, just a reminder, please keep your, your your stories a little bit shorter next time. I know there's so many people who raise their hands. We try to get through as many as we can, but just to be fair to everybody in the experience, we look forward to now, of course, seeing you guys, inshallah, next week. A thank you again to our amazing, uh, you know, sponsors and supporters at HHRD in the U.S., Islamic Relief in Canada, and Forgotten Women in the U.K., inshallah. Look out for this weekend. We have a fatwa night with Sheikh Abu Isa Nemotala. We have Kahoot starting tomorrow inshallah we have some new hosts coming on who will be joining us and of course Sheikh, Sheikh Abdurbar Yahya is going to be with us tomorrow that was the topic I mixed up for today that was repentance with Sheikh Abdurbar Yahya inshallah so look out for that see you guys tomorrow live same time same place for now take care stay happy stay healthy stay safe and assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh